This is Adam Gorney with the Respect My Decision podcast with a special guest this week, Mark Henry, sexual chocolate. Most days. <laughs> Most days. World, ch- world champion deadlifter, right? Squatter? World champion powerlifter. Oh, okay. World okay. champion strongman. World champion wrestler. wrestler. Nice. Let's start with the football career. Didn't, didn't go well, right? That, that wasn't the... Well, it wasn't that it didn't go well. I did pretty good. I, yeah. I just made the decision to be the strongest man in the world when I was 11 years old. That was my ultimate goal. Football was... I did because I was a Texan, and by birthright, when you're born in Texas and you're a male, you have to play football. <laughs> How does that come that you're going to say, I'm going to be the strongest, you know, the, 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 power, the power lifter? Cause... I have no idea, man. I wanted to be two people. I wanted to be a Vasily Alexiev and I wanted to be Magic Johnson. Yeah. And I was not 6'9". <laughs> right. I could dunk, but I wasn't 6'9". And, um, but being the strongest man in the world always appealed to me as a little kid. All my childhood pictures of you know me flexing like I'm in some kind of bodybuilding contest, and um, uh, I just always put an emphasis on how strong I was. That was just my measure of what a superhero was. Yeah. You know, I like Superman and the Hulk. Yeah. You know, they were the strongest. Did, were you always a strong guy? Were a strong kid, or was that something that you had to develop and get into, and then really build up? I always had it in me, but. Like, I could really feel it. Like, I wish they would have had wrestling in my little country town, Silsby, yeah, because yeah. I would have wrestled. I love wrestling and everybody that would wrestle me, even adults. I, I felt like I was stronger than them. Yeah. And I rarely lost. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, uh, it was, it's a good feeling to feel strong. It's like people that run fast, they hear that whistling. I, I never heard the whistle. Right, right. But me neither. The, the strength. <laughs> Man, I loved it. It feels great to me. Even I'm, I'm a 50 year old man. I'm still pretty strong, but nothing like I was. But it's, it, it, I'm confident that if, if you try something, I'd, I'd hurt you. <laughs> me too. I'm confident. <laughs> I won't try anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 try it. My son is out here. He yeah. It's my bodyguard. Let's talk WWF, WWE, whatever. How did that? kind of start how did you get into it and obviously a tremendous career there. mainly because I was a fan of wrestling yeah and every interview that I did I talked about wrestling because that's what I love yeah. and uh, Vince McMahon came got realized that no, I was not, a I'm, fan I'm, I'm mm-hmm. done. and he said that um, you know I'd love to have you come check us out yeah. you know you come check us out we we, we, we love to have you come and see what we do. And uh, he was like, you got the kind of personality, you should be a wrestler. Yeah. And uh, he was right. Yeah. You know, so I, I always appreciate and respect uh, him for that. And uh, he did a really good job of explaining what it was to be in the business and not have the business chew you up. He said, you're a smart guy, so uh, I, I'm not worried about you. And you know, wrestling has its has its its, its ills, and sure. you know, you can see the dark side of the ring for all that. But uh, you you'll never see me on there. You uh, tell the Andre the Giant story because I was reading about that, and that's an interesting one. Just you know, like all I see, I seen it a, at least ten thousand times. You walk to the ring, the kids run, they lean against the barricade, they fall over the barricade. I was one of those kids. So it's like, wow. Yeah. All of the time that I did it, uh, some kids behind me, they were running too. And because I had my feet up on the bicycle rack, they knocked me over and my hands were on the ground. Yeah. So Andre was walking to the ring. I just had to see him. And he picked me up. Put me back on the other side of the barricade. I've done that at least five times yeah. in my life. Yeah. So there's going to be a kid that maybe he'll be a wrestler one day and he'll tell the same story about me. Um, it's, it's not uncommon. It just happened last week with yeah. Cody Rhodes. Right. You know, the kid jumped over the barricade and came and was like, Cody. Yeah. And they were, the security was like, Yeah. It's your kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, so it, it happens, man. How do you manage through that career, though? Because. I mean, you, there, there, there is 
falling on, you know, getting slammed and all those kinds of things. And I'm sure there's ways to do it that, you know, but it's a lot of travel and a lot of stuff and a lot of pain and a lot of the whole thing. You know? Yeah, and, it, and it's not like I'm a 200-pound guy yeah. where I fit in every seat and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's strenuous with the travel, it's strenuous with the uh, accommodations yeah. and, you know, just pressurizing your body three or four times a week is is enough to make you just want to go lay down somewhere yeah so uh it's tough but you know what man like my I had one of my coaches used to say hey the post office is hiring right like you want this world you want this life yeah. you got to sacrifice and and just gut it out and the other thing is you know i could half-ass my job most days and that's okay, you know. You you can't do that. No, you have to deliver everything. If I have fast, then somebody might die. Right, right. And, and you know, I'm 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 at AEW now as a uh, as a coach, yeah. a mentor, uh, working our educational program, community involvement. Um, you know, whatever the company needs me to do, I'm there for. And it is refreshing to see all these young people. It'd be corporate now. Yeah. It's, it's commonplace. This is the way it is. You know, there are practices we have, in place. Yeah. Right. We have HR. Right. You know, like when I came into wrestling, it was the wild, wild west, man. It was every man for himself. And uh, the only support you got was from the the boss. Yeah. The booker, people that valued you. Yeah. And you had to be good to get that love. If you weren't good, then good luck with good luck to you. You didn't go to classy Freddie Blassie for <laughs> no, no. I, he was a practical joke. I hear I heard a lot of stories, but you know it was like I had good mentorship. What do you look for when you're doing this? You know, you're like a talent scout kind of guy, mentoring all that kind of stuff. Is it is it personality? Is it charisma? Or is it like just technical? Or is it kind of a mix of everything? It's a combination of it. Yeah. You want to have somebody to be uh, athletic and flexible and have good measurables and all yeah. that stuff. A good look. Kind of like what we're looking for in football players. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can be ugly and be beautiful in wrestling. Right. <laughs> you know, right. and you can be beautiful and be horrible right. at wrestling. Right, right. Uh, but I look for when you walk in the room and everybody goes, who is that? Mm -hmm. That's who I want yeah. because it's a combination of them being physically impressive, but uh, it's also a combination of them um, having a personality and leadership, and they're not shy. Yeah, they they can lead the charge. Yeah, and uh, you need that to captivate an audience. Yeah, you have to have that, right? Yeah, yeah. you gotta have it. Yeah. It's, it's some of them out here. They just scared and being reserved, and sure. I wanna. Make waves. There's one of them over there that's you know yeah. that's mine. He 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 thinks he's the rock already. Being a football dad, being a being an athlete yourself, and then now having someone play sports, is it super hands on? Is it let him kind of figure it out the path himself? How do you kind of handle it? Because everybody does it differently. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tell him what's right. Yeah. And my education and biomechanical science and. Being a world champion in three sports that have nothing to do with each other means I'm a little bit crazy, but I know what hard work is, yeah. and I, I don't take no off ramps. You know, like you said, you want to do this. I could have been home right now. Yeah. So go and apply yourself and make sure that my money is not wasted. And he understands that. And he wants to be great without me being without being in my shadow. Yeah. And I said, look, man, I, I didn't play football after high school. I went to a couple of training camps yeah. because people asked me, but not because I wanted to. Right. You want to do it, go do it. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. You could still power slam him, though, right? If you, if you needed to. I could, but then I would have to deal with my wife. So I'd rather not. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, man. That's Mark Henry, world's strongest man here with Adam Gorney for Rivals.com.